Hi, it's Tim with Final Embrace, and we're going to be showing you today how to make a mask, a face mask, that has both room for a filter and a nose wire, and it's also with these straps so it can go over someone's face and their head and be tied tight depending upon the person. Uh, and these are more comfortable wear long term. They also have a place on the inside for a filter to be placed in, and of course that piece of nose wire that I talked about. We'll talk about how to improvise those. Now when you receive this package from us, if you're doing one of our kits, you're gonna receive uh, several pieces of the fabric. It's a single piece of fabric and it's nine inches wide by 18 inches tall. We've already surged the top and bottom edge. We're gonna use that to make our, our masks. And you'll also receive two of these two inch wide strips. Now you're gonna to need to turn these into bias binding like you would for a quilt. And the way you do that is you'll fold, you'll fold a half inch in on either side toward the middle and fold that in half again and iron it. It's real easy to use an iron for that. Now let's take a closer look at what you can use. This is what's called a bias tape maker. You can buy these uh, at most fabric stores. And we cut the end of our bias, or of our bias binding at a cross, uh, at an angle here. And I place it into the bias binder, uh, binding maker. And as I push it through, and sometimes you have to get, use a pin or something to push it through. I can grab usually in the back here, there's a place for you to push the fabric through. We get it out to the other end. And as you pull that through, it will, if you do it the correct way, after a while you have to sort of, you have to play with it. It's a little bit finicky, but it will begin to fold over your fabric to create that bias shape. And then you can iron it into place. Uh, they do take a, a few minutes to figure out how to use, but once you're doing a lot of it, it's, it's much faster to go through um, and you twist it through the right way. And that's real easy to do with your uh, ironing board, or you can literally just, and you see how it finally works as you get about halfway bit through, or you literally can just take it down and fold both ends in hit it with your iron, then fold it in half again. Once you've done that, here's what you'll get. Uh, these two strap pieces that are done, and we're ready to start making our actual mask. So we're gonna take that 19 inch piece, and we're gonna fold down that 18 by nine, sorry, and we're gonna fold down about uh, three quarters of an inch or so, and we're gonna stitch along this edge. So let's see what that looks like at the machine. And then we're only gonna do about a five inch section in the middle. So I just sort of eyeball two or two inches over or so. And I'm gonna stitch right along that, right along the surged edge. And you'll see on this side, you can see the black stitch has filled in. And that's where they can put, they can put a nose wire. Then we're gonna fill the, flip the entire other end that was right up to it and either butt them together or put it right over top of the other one. And now if you want, you can just base the whole side down. Notice what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna base right down this entire edge. This is gonna keep all the pieces and parts together when, I, when we put in our pleats. So I'm gonna do both sides here. Again, make sure that the filter pocket goes over that nose piece. Now I'm gonna bring it back over to my area here where we'll look at it up close. And now I need to put in the pleats. Now here's one that I've gone ahead and started the pleats and you'll notice what's happened with this particular one. So we want the pleats to go on the outside of the mask facing down. And to get that, we are going to flip this over and fold down till it's about two thirds. This edge is about two thirds down the piece. And then we'll bring it back till it just reaches over top of that top section. And we're gonna put a couple pins in it. Now for safety's sake, rather than putting them in the side where you might do if you were going to pull them out as you sew, we're gonna put them in the inside so we can put our bias tape on without having to take any of the pins out. So I'll put that one there and I'm gonna do one on the other side as well. All right, and we need to do the same thing with the bottom here. I'm gonna fold it down and fold it back up and just sort of try to make it fit close to where the whole mask is kind of, we don't have to have too much hang at the bottom here, but we wanna get a pretty good size pleat. The reason we do the pleats down rather than up is that it helps from trapping anything that might drop as a droplet or something else. Um, it's been suggested that, you know, the less surface area that you can create pleats or folds that something might drop down on, the better. So that's our entire piece. You'll see we have two of them very similar. And then we're gonna add our, our binding. Now, the way we do that is we'll take this 
binding that we've pre-made. And I'm gonna find the center of it. If you'll back out a little bit, we can see what this looks like. I'm gonna find the center of this and just figure I'm gonna put that on the center of my, my piece. So I lay that down and I know that's pretty much the center. I'm gonna pop it open, lay my mask in there and then trap that edge inside. And I'm gonna stitch along here. Now you could put another pin in if you want. What I like to do is just take this just like this to the machine. I don't wanna to have to take out more pins and I'll start right at the top and stitch down. And I'm stitching really close to the edge. If you'll come in close here, you'll see that I'm stitching actually really close to the edge of that fabric. And then I'm gonna go all the way to the end of, of the bias tape. And I'm not gonna worry about finishing the end of the bias tape in any beautiful way. In fact, we can just come in with a pair of scissors and trim that off if we want to. So just as long as we backstitch that a little bit. And then I'll come back to this point where I had started and then I'll just finish the rest of the other piece of the bias tape. So I'll come back there, start on. And again, make sure you back and forth on the ends here because this is where the most wear and tear will happen and where it's gonna maybe wear out while it's being washed over and over and over again. Now we've done one whole side there, completely enclosed. I could take out the pins now if I choose to. And then I'll do the other side. And the other side I can do really much, pretty much right at the machine. Just find my center point, put it on there, open up the bias tape, lay this in the center. We're using really long tails on the strap and we're doing that because we don't know how big a head they have to go around, but also because it can be trimmed to the right length or they can just have a little extra and it's easier to pull off their head when it's not. Now, if you wanted, you could use a guide on your machine. So if you wanted to, you could put a guide on your machine to get it really exact if you wanted to go even faster with less concern. Um, now that I've done that side though, I'll flip it over, remember, and, and finish the other way. I'm not as worried about it because I've been sewing for, you know, 30, almost 20 something, almost 30 years. And I feel comfortable just flying through. Get that guide out of there so it stops rattling like crazy. And then trim, take out our pins. And if you'll back out, you'll see that what we've created now is a mask. Now this one's a little lopsided. I think that's okay though, because the idea is that you have a place here to not only put your filter, but a place to put your nose wire. And let me get you um, what that would look like. I found this material at, um, at Dollar General, actually, no, Dollar Tree. And it's a material that they tie up plants with and it's enclosed a little softness and it just squishes. I'd cut them a little longer. This one right now is about three inches and I think I'd cut it more like four or five and you can just stick it in the edge of that, get it toward the center. If you did about five inches, it would get toward the center. And uh, we are gonna sterilize every one of these before they go anywhere so I can show you what would happen. You can, um, you might wanna trim your threads a little like I haven't. And what you would do is they could tuck a filter in this space in here, put the nose piece in, place it up to their nose. Now I'm going to push it, the nose, I'm gonna take my glasses off real quick. I'm gonna push the nose piece on here. And then because I have the extra long ties, it won't matter how big my face necessarily is. And then I pull this down under my chin to secure it. And my nose is now nice and secure. I can tie that one. if I can remember how to tie things. And now we have a nice face mask. Now the thing to remember, if you're giving this to people that you know uh, to use, taking it to the no local nursing facility that's on our website that you have contacted, well, we want you to make sure they understand that there is an inside and an outside. The outside, of course, doesn't have any of that surging. The inside has that surging in the pocket and the hole and they don't want to turn it around and put it back on the other way. They want to make sure they put it on the correct way when they do it. That is our 
mask that we're creating. Uh, this is the official version we're doing for healthcare facilities that we'll be creating kits for. And to find out more, you need to go to our Facebook page or check out our website. I'm Tim Totten with Final Embrace.